Hey, it's your boy DJ Wolf here. I got uh, a little something on my mind here right now. I uh, want to talk about two stories. Uh, the first story, well, actually, I, I may talk about the other one a little, a little later. Well, maybe I should, because they're both one the same. One was involve, involving, uh, as far as I'm concerned, an attempted murder. And the other one was involved two patrons at a popular coffee shop and were arrested just because they wouldn't wear anything. Let me talk about <clears throat> the thing that happened in Philadelphia. The two black patrons, the two black guys were at a Starbucks waiting on a third person so they could order. We do this at restaurants all the time. We'll go to a restaurant. We'll have a space reserved. We'll sit down, wait for the other uh, guests to come over, and then we'll start ordering. It's not much different, except if you're black. Manager of Starbucks, I want them to order something. They said they were waiting on a friend. Uh, the manager of Starbucks decided, well, you're not going to leave? If you're not going to order anything, uh, I'll call the cops. They call the cops. And the, uh, the brothers explained to the officers that they were waiting on a friend. Cops said, you're not going to buy anything? We have to arrest you. And you know what they arrested them for? Trespassing! Like, really? You're at a public place. That's not trespassing. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like this country is getting more and more biased, man. Racially biased. I've noticed it, too. Even on the job. Um... But this other story is is it's also just as racist. There was a 14-year-old kid, and yeah, he was a kid, who I don't know where it happened at, but he, uh, I guess he had uh, missed his bus, and he, I'm trying to find out where his bus route was. I don't know if he had just moved over in the neighborhood or what, but so he went to a, a, somebody's house to ask for direction from about the school. I you know. I guess he was going to try to walk, uh, try to get to the route to the school himself. And the woman was freaking out for no reason. Husband came downstairs, put out a shotgun, and tried to shoot the young man. The young man took off. And of course. The white guy gets a ring, and instead of him being charged with uh, attempted manslaughter, he gets a fifty thousand dollar bond. Really? And they says not his first time at the rodeo with this kind of stuff. My thing is that racism is still alive and well in this country, and it's getting worse. And. Yeah, this is Sunday because usually I'll be in church right about now. I'm not going to go into detail about why I'm not going. But to me on some level, and the more, I, the more I think about it, the more I feel personally that the black church is ineffective. Okay, when it comes to feeding our people, yeah. Okay, that's one thing. But in terms of any real power, you have a structure in the church where the hierarchy starts from the pastor on down. But we have no real power. Nope. None. Not even a little bit. And this stuff keeps going on and going on and going on. And as long as we sit on our ass and don't say anything, and long as we don't bother to put the candidates in office who are really going to be about us, and I ain't talking about white candidates anymore, I'm talking about black candidates, who are about us, who will have their feet held to the fire on it. You know. And as long as we don't get our kids the education they need, because other motherfuckers talking about education is a privilege and not a right, we're going to see more of this shit. 
But I want you guys to take a look at this video. This is being used via fair use because I am talking about racism as whole. Even though people deny that it's racism. But trust me and believe, if, the, if this 14-year-old young man was a white kid, you would never hear about it. It would have never happened. They probably would have invited him in for milk and cookies and took him, probably would have drove him to school. You know. But this is also a cautionary tale as well because you have to make sure, and he's 14, do not leave the house without your phone and your keys and whatever little money you have to have for school. That's it. I told you to tell my son that every day. You know. So, here's the story. Then I turned back. Um, I turned back. I turned back and then um, I heard the gunshot. This freshman student recounting his walk to school this morning that took a terrifying turn. His decision to stop and ask for directions nearly cost him his life. It's our top story tonight. 14 year old Brennan Walker missed the bus this morning and when he tried to remember the route, he got lost. That's when he decided to knock on someone's door and that knock was met with yelling and eventually gunshots. Seven Action News reporter Brian Abel talked with the Rochester High School freshman and his mother tonight and Brian, first off, he's okay. He is okay. The man actually missed as Walker was running away. Now, this all started when Walker missed his alarm, and he says that this is where the bus, it comes down, it loops around, and it comes back. So he started walking up this street to try to redo the route, but he wouldn't make it to school, and now his family is questioning if race played a role. The shock of what happened this morning hasn't seemed to set in for 14-year-old Brennan Walker. You know, I don't know how you process getting shot at <laughs> for asking for directions. After missing the bus, he thought he knew the route well enough to walk the roughly four miles to school. He didn't, so he stopped at a home and knocked. I knocked on her door a few times, and she came down yelling at me like before I could say anything. And I was, she thought I was trying to break into her house. I was trying to explain to her that um, I wanted to get directions to go to my school. I told her that, no, I go to Rochester High. I'm just looking for directions to Rochester High. Instead of helping him out, Walker and his mom, Lisa, say security video from that home shows a woman yelling to her husband. The man of the house came down, pretty much just grabbed a shotgun and went to sh shoot at my son. I saw, saw it, like him holding it like this through the window. And you know, I guess I put my hands up, I don't really remember. And I started to run. I looked back behind me. I saw him aiming at me. Then I turned back. Um, I turned back. I turned back, and then um, I heard the gunshot. And I tried to run faster. Thankfully, the shot missed. But if someone is running from your house and you chase them outside and shoot at them, you're going to have criminal charges coming from us. Both Walker and his mom believe race was a factor. After watching the video um, and hearing the wife say, why did these people choose my house? I knew it was racially motivated. I don't know what other these people she possibly could have been talking about. He was by himself. I didn't want to believe that that type of stuff would happen here. And to make matters worse for Walker's mom, she says her husband is special forces deployed in Syria. Both of my men are, are at risk. You know, and they're both trying to do the right thing. So it's just like, what do you do? This one's fighting for the country. This is trying to get an education. And Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard says the man who pulled that trigger, he is in custody tonight. Reporting live in Rochester Hills, Brian Abel, 7 Action News. Brian, thank you. You know, I'm looking at that kid. Vulnerable, young, handsome likely gifted black 14 year old kid man two things I noticed first thing I noticed that he's a product of a single family he may not be but it appears to be that because that woman look awfully young that's his mother by the way um And if there is a father, he was not available because I know damn well if that happened to my kid, I'd be the first one to talk to him and news people about it. I can tell you that right up front. You know. And it was a shame that we have 
generation upon generation of kids with no father leading the home. This Me Too movement, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to say that again, too, because this is a part of the issue, too. Women do, I mean, that's this is what, this is me. I do feel that they do have some kind of, uh, uh, they do have to have uh, uh, their own me time, so to speak, you know. But not to a point where you are accusing every guy, including Bill Cosby, about doing this, that, and the other. Oh, that's another host. I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get that later. But I ain't gonna talk about that right now. But what I'm saying is the women's women's lib movement for a very long time have told women you don't need a man to define you. While that part might be the case, you can't define your children by trying to be both both the mother and the father either. That's real talk. Children, all children, must have parents in their life. Strong, strong will, honest, good teaching, good hearted parents. But definitely parents who, who, who have strong backbone who are about their best interest for their children. Otherwise, why have have kids at all if you're not, not going to be about their business of trying to be there for them? You know, too many of women are encouraged to, you know, just go ahead, just have kids and not deal with men. It's, 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 the logic of what I tell you is real. And it seems like this country is just behind all this liberation for this, that, and the other. In terms of that, and I don't think that's right. I think there's a limit to some of this stuff, man. But getting back to this, the racism is real, but we got to teach our kids, hey, make sure you have your phone on you, okay? Um, because, and use all our terms, because you can see, especially if you go to white neighborhoods now, man, they're all about the bullshit. I'm telling you. They're all about the bullshit. And it makes no sense, man. It's, it's, it's really a shame. You can't be waiting in a restaurant while black, and you can't even knock on the door to ask for directions while black. Somebody gotta fuck with you just because of the color of your skin. And then now, on social media, you can't even talk about these issues because then they, then they try to label you a black identity extremist, which is another bunch of bullshit. Oh, I might give my package. I was like, I never heard of this before. <laughs> but no, but seriously though, what I'm saying is, we gotta be there for our kids, man. We got to be there for our kids. I just can't fathom us not being there for our kids in this day and age. I mean, my son's in his mid twenties now, and I'm like. I try to keep in touch with him several times a week during the week to make sure he's okay. Because that's what fathers do. This racism out here is real. It's not, it's not a joke anymore. It is real. It's real as real gets. And we just need to stay on top of things, whether it be with our families or our children. Because at the end of the day, they're still letting the crazies run in the silent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about Trump. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. This is DJ Wolf. You continue to be there for your kids, man. And I'll continue to pray for them. I'm out, guys.